everybody, and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Really excited that you're here. Today is a real quick video to show you how I did a palette wall. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is my before and after shot. On the left is what it looked like before I got started, and on the right is what we ended up with with the final result. So let's go ahead and uh, show you what we did. So went ahead and cleared everything out. This is my son Jordan helping. He's home visiting from where he's stationed for the Marines. So was really happy to have him here because I did feel like it was a little bit daunting to try and do this by myself. I totally could do it by myself, but sometimes with things like this, I like having somebody to help out. <laughs> so we cleared everything out of there. You saw Jordan uh, taking the little Swiffer duster and clearing out uh, the little uh, areas of dust that had collected under the piece of furniture that I had there. And he is putting down a drop cloth for me, the kind of son that he is. Um, because the first thing that we're going to do is actually paint this wall. So, oh, yep, he just took out the little nail that was holding the painting there and we took off uh, the other little print that was on the wall just so that we didn't bump it and knock it off on the floor in the process of doing this. So we are using this dark chocolate color. You can actually see that there um, on the side. I think my dog hit the camera, so sorry about that. And don't mind the mess on my desk. Um, but I am doing the cutting in and Jordan is using the roller. And the reason for using this dark paint is so that when we put up the palette wall, if there are any gaps, it will be a lot less noticeable with a dark color behind there. So once that was done, we left that to dry and we moved on out into the garage. And I have all of this pallet wood that Rich had gotten for me. He had gotten me a bunch of pallets and um, a few years ago, actually, we had um, gone to the task of cutting them all down. So they've just been sitting out in the garage and Jordan and I measured off an area and now we're just laying out the pallet wood in the pattern that we want to put it up on the wall. So you can see Sammy is there helping as well, or not so much, but <laughs> he loves playing fetch with his ball. So, and he can be a little bit relentless. So he's popping in and out. So we're measuring it off. I needed this to be six feet wide and 103 inches from top to bottom. So once we had that measured off, we went ahead and we are drawing with a straight edge, a line all the way down from top to bottom on the pallet wood. And then we're gonna go back and do the same thing on the other side once we have this one done. And this is gonna be our cutting lines. I just wanted to make sure we had a nice straight line on either side of what will be our pallet wall. So now we're measuring again from the line that we drew on the far side, and Jordan is marking it off at the six foot, um, well, yeah, I'm lining it up at six feet and he's marking it down at the end. And then we're gonna use our straight edge <clears throat> to draw a line all the way down our boards again. And once we have that done, Jordan is helping me go through. He is on the ends marking an X on the section that we're gonna be cutting off and not using. And then we're also marking the back of the boards with a number and a color. So we numbered them, I wanna say we had something like 73 boards in all. So they're numbered one through 73. And then we were also randomizing the stain colors that we were gonna be using. I had four different colors of stain. One was called Kona, which was a, a really dark brown, almost black. Then we had dark walnut, a weathered gray, and then something called sun bleached and the sun bleached ended up being i thought it was going to be a sand color but it ended up being like a, a light gray so i had basically a really dark brown a medium brown like a chocolate brown a nice medium gray and then a light gray that i was working with so now i'm using the miter saw or the chop saw i think some people call it and i'm just trimming off the edges on the boards that we had marked for for cutting so as i do this jordan's off camera right now but he is there sanding all of these boards down just on the sides that will be facing out so the sides that we want to 
stain as well as the edges just to make sure that everything um, is uh, nice and clean and we don't have any things sticking out that might cause splinters or anything of that nature so once and there you can see Jordan sanding away for me so once I had them all cut down I took the ones that he had sanded and I started sorting them by color so I wanted to make sure that I had all of the same color together so I could do one stain at a time and it was just going to be most efficient that way so once I had the ones that he had already sanded sorted out I went ahead and I'm lining him up with all of one color so that he can go ahead and get those all sanded while I am starting to stain so I'm just collecting the other ones that didn't need to be cut and I'm picking them up by color getting those sorted and you can see Sammy trying for those tennis balls <laughs> that are hanging in the garage. Rich had uh, set those balls up for us so that when we pull our cars in, we know exactly where to stop. Because as you can see, we've got a lot of storage in the garage as well. So Sammy just loves his tennis balls and he spent a good part of the time trying to see if there was a way that he could grab the ones that were hanging in the garage. <laughs> But at any rate, I am coming in now with the Kona, which is that dark brown color. And I am using a paintbrush. Now, I did use the paintbrush for this first stain color. And then later on, I ended up just applying it and removing it with paper towels. So I'm applying it with a paintbrush and then I'm gonna remove the excess with um, a paper towel. But I ultimately, and here I'm showing you that how pretty that wood grain looked with that dark stain color um, but ultimately you know I forgot that these are oil based and I didn't have any mineral spirits spirits or anything proper to clean out my paintbrush so I ultimately decided for here's Sammy trying to help again ultimately decided that for the other colors I was just gonna come in and use paper towel to apply the um, and you could use a rag. Paper towel is probably not the best thing if Sammy's watching from Unicorn Dust Design. She does a lot with wood stains and she's probably going, oh, Corey, what are you doing? <laughs> but it worked for me. So I got everything stained. And once it was dry, we came in with our handy dandy um, nail gun, which I absolutely love. Rich got this for me for my birthday and uh, it was the best. I just love it. And we are just um, identifying the order. And actually, my daughter stepped in and helped us at this point. And she was uh, looking for all of the numbers and getting them in order for us. And then we just took them and one by one, you know, one through 73 or whatever it ended up being, um, just applied them to the wall and just put a nail in each of the four corners of each of the pieces of palette. And the brads, these are nail brads that I'm using in my nail gun, and they were two inch brads. So my palette wood, I would say these pieces are about a half inch thick each. So we've got the nails that are able to sink into the wall about an inch and a half, and I figured that that should be sufficient for our purposes and should secure these quite nicely. And they seem to have worked quite well. Now, I will say that in this particular wall, I have no outlets. I've got no power running through there. Um, I don't have duct work or anything like that. If you're going to do something like this, I would just warn that you probably want to be aware of any electrical wires or anything that might be in the wall behind because you don't want to damage any wiring. So I happen to have a pantry on the other side of this wall, so I know for a fact that there's nothing in the wall there. And there's Elena helping and she's uh, dusting them off because we did have a lot of sawdust on there. So she's just making sure that they're nice and clean for me as we put them up onto the wall. And then she got in on the action too, showing Elena how to use the, the nail gun. <laughs> and I was really happy with the way that it was turning out already. And honestly, once we had everything cut and sanded and stained this last part was really pretty quick i think we got the whole wall up in maybe half an hour 
It was really, really fast. And the project in and of itself, um, from start to finish, was about eight hours worth of work, just to give you an idea. And that's with having the pallet wood already cut down. So you'd probably want to add in at least a couple more hours if you're going to start pulling pallets apart yourself. And there we have it. Just cleaning up, removing our tarp, and we'll put our furniture back in a little bit, but here's the final product. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to get your thoughts. Okay, everybody, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the project. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up because it really does help support my channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so as well as hitting that little bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.